All right, special guest joining us today on Pirate Radio Live, our guy DB, Danny Beal, former East Carolina pitcher. Danny, what's up, buddy? What's going on? Good to be back. Yeah? Yeah. What you doing? Not a darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is honestly, it's nice coming from what it used to be where, you know, I'm talking to the old players on the team and they're busy doing God knows what and the whole preseason stuff, getting back to school and stuff. So it's actually kind of nice to be able to not do anything for once, you know? Good, good. Rest up, rest up. Well, we brought you here to talk some football. That's right. That's all right with you. Yeah. Uh, first of all, how are you feeling about the Pirates? Jake Garcia, named the quarterback, new offense, a lot of new faces. What are you thinking? I'm excited. I mean, it's it's a mix of both old and new. Obviously, you got Rajay and all the other guys. But, I mean, it's yeah, I'm excited. I was very pleased, not pleased, but intrigued to see that they picked Jake but because I think both candidates were a really good option. But I think, you know, they saw what they needed to see out of Jake and Camp and Ready to get going. He said all the right stuff in the media, so I'm excited to see what they got Saturday. I was a little surprised about the 33 and a half number. That is a large number, especially um, with Norfolk State with a game under their belt too. Yeah, yeah, a very competitive game where they lost by one, went for two, didn't get it against Florida A&M. Do you think uh, we'll be able to kind of Saturday night chill during the second half? Can we make this an easy one and get to one and a? I think so. I think it'll be. Because Coach Houston said it the other day, he was saying how he he need even needs to tame himself a little bit pregame to not get everybody so juiced up to the point where they are like overpressing and you know playing out of their minds. But I think the first half will be close. They'll get the jitters out. They'll you know they'll feel everything out. They'll get a feel for the game and the flow of it all. And then the second half, I think they'll just they'll they'll, they'll get to business and they'll they'll do what they preached all preseason and show out what the offense is supposed to do and the defense will always be great with coach Harrell so it'll be it'll be a good showing Saturday I think we'll be with you two o'clock on the Bud Light pregame tailgate Danny Beal will be a part of that show he'll be our special pirate picker uh this week (laughs) so you'll hear uh some of his picks for the afternoon and evening games coming up on Saturday and then after the game the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter Collins show myself Holton Aylers and Caden Norman always great that's gonna be interesting that is going to be hopefully I know we've talked about it but the a little run in that he's at Holton's had with the college in the past. I hope it hope it comes up again because it's going to be an interesting interesting conversation. And we're in talks uh, to get Danny Bill on the tenth inning show next season yeah, for baseball. Yeah. That's right. That's <laughs> that right. would be wild. That would be God. That would be nice. <laughs> All right, DB. So I'm putting you on the spot here because um, you had kind of mentioned this, but I, I, I didn't tell you to come prepared with it. Do you have a your group of five team to make the playoff and your national champion, or am I asking too much from you? I, Have you thought about that? It's pretty cool, right? A group of five it's, team. It's so cool. Yeah. Like, I, I, I initially, there's been so many changes, one, to college football in general, just with the two-minute warning, the in-helmet communication, obviously the 12-team yeah. playoff, the chance that a team that's not normally even considered for it actually has a really good chance. Um no, I mean I haven't. God, I, your initial thought is like the Boise State, right. like the liberties of the world. But I haven't really thought about Group Five. I'm just excited to see who makes it. But and we get a crack at Liberty and App State. Our playoffs sure start do. in September sure if do. you're East Carolina. Sure yeah, so. hey, your 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 road starts pretty early. But yes. I mean, I don't know. You think about Ohio State, and it's like they have so much talent all over the board, all over the board. Like, but one thing I heard Kirk Herbstreit say the other day is like, when has Ohio State ever had like a lack of talent like they've always had uh, super incredible true. talent like you know the 2015 team where they had Zeke and everybody like I just yeah they have talent but can they put it all together on the field I think is the bigger question so obviously Ohio State and Georgia and all of them but I think I personally am a big Dan Lanning fan so okay. I think Oregon's gonna I think Oregon's gonna, Oregon's going to win the national championship for me they make the Big Ten interesting this year usually I'm not interested in the Big Ten yeah. Oregon uh, makes it interesting, and it's you can't put a guy that wins 10, 11 games every year on the hot seat, can you? But I feel like Ryan Day. <laughs> I agree. I, it's, it's a weird situation. Now, with with them, it's interesting because there, you have the Michigan factor of, like, if you don't be Michigan, you're automatically on the hot seat, right? So it's like that will factor in, but with Harbaugh gone and Sharon Moore, who knows? But, I mean, I, Ohio State's defense is – they bring a lot of guys back. They – Averaged 11 points per game last year. I don't think, and you can look at the schedule, I don't think they gave up a touchdown to week five. <laughs> and I right. know that's a crazy hot take, but I genuinely think that that's a real possibility. I think they go Iowa, Rutgers, and like two non conference. Like they play Akron this week. Like I don't think they give up a touchdown okay. for the first month of the I season. I have not heard that, and now I'm locked into that. That's, hey, I'm going to follow it, that yeah, week exactly. to week. Uh, don't give up a touchdown till mid October, <laughs> says Danny Bill. <laughs> All right, so, uh, DB, let's talk about some games. Uh, we'll be checking out some games uh, while we're at the Pirate Radio Football Kickoff Party tonight. Uh, what do you think about Prime? Are you 
Intrigued by Prime? Tired of Prime? I don't know. I My girlfriend's from Denver. Okay. So, obviously, it's a craze out there. Whenever I go out there, there's Prime billboards. You know, there's stuff. And really? All of her family's like, Prime, Prime. And it's like, all right. I think it's... He has had some run-ins with the media, which makes me think he's not nearly as confident about his team as he has been in the past because he's trying to protect the brand. The whole thing with the Saudi Arabia money, <laughs> which is even crazy to even say out loud, but... I think they will be better than people think. I think it's a mixed bag of half people think that they're going to be like an eight-win team and half the people think they're going to be three or four. Right. I think they'll be somewhere in the middle. I think they'll make a bowl game, but I don't know if they're going to be super big competitors in the Big 12. Got an FCS opponent tonight, but not a pushover in North no. Dakota State. No, good, really good squad, yeah. And uh, and that's one of the best games of tonight. The other, I guess, will be North Carolina, Minnesota. I'm... I, I am I'm fired up for this college football season. I'm I'm not as fired up for ACC this year because I feel like it's a log jam. I guess that makes it intriguing. I don't know if there is a team above the rest. We'll see what Clemson has. Yeah. But but where does North Carolina and NC State kind of fit in? The problem with that is they're just going to beat the crap out of each other, yeah. and it's going to be like a last man standing out of these because there's there's a lot of good teams, but they're not there's not one outstanding, especially after Florida State loses last week, where it's like. They were the clear pick at the beginning of the season. Be like, all right, it's Florida State for sure. Florida State, maybe Clemson State could make it interesting. But now that it's Florida State's lost, obviously, an ACC game in itself, it is relatively, in my eyes, wide open. I think Virginia Tech's good. I think Mac Brown being one of three head coaches, active head coaches in the league, or, or I guess in the country, to have won a national championship, he's got the oh, pedigree. Wow, yeah. I mean, you think Dabo, Kirby, and him. Man. So, I mean, that's un- unreal, but. I don't know. I think it's, it, like I said, it's going to be a punching bag of just all of them beating the crap out of each other, and we'll see at the end. Unless we're undervaluing Clemson and they can return to their throne. I yes. feel like those days are gone, but but we'll we'll find out what they got pretty quick when they play Georgia on Saturday. What do you think about that? Who knows? I mean, they, they are one of the few teams in the country that didn't bring any in anybody yeah. from the transfer portal, but I saw this stat the other day. Georgia has not lost the game since COVID to anybody except Nick Saban. <laughs> they also have not lost a non-conference game since 2016, and it was against Georgia Tech in the last week of the season in a rivalry game. Man. So when you put those two things together, winning, what, two out of the last three now, I just – I get – I and this is betting me, but, like, 13 and a half points, I don't I don't care. Like, I mean, it's it's in, the game is in Georgia. It's in Atlanta. Like, <clears throat> all of the things point to Georgia's going to roll. They bring back so many offensive players. I just don't see how Georgia just doesn't dominate that game. One more noon game I want to ask you about. The, I'm I like West Virginia way too much. Saturday. I do too. Can you talk me out of that? Or we? I just... don't. I don't know if it's me being a huge Pat McAfee fan, but I love West Virginia too. I think it's going to be a really. I don't, I'm also not a big Drew Aller fan. I don't think he's he like James Franklin is so good against everybody except Ohio State and Michigan. But first week of the season, you are the top front, top ten ranked team. You're on the road. This is the biggest game in West Virginia and Morgantown since, like, the 90s. Like, they're going to be ready to go. It's going to be, yeah. And I think it's going to be a really good game. I mean, you saw last week with the underdogs, like, four underdogs covered or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like five if you want to include uh, Norfolk State and the FCS. And the, five out of five. They were all close games. Like, I think this will kind of fall into the same category of, hey, it's a ranked team on the road. It's going to be close. And I think it'll be a really good game. I hope West Virginia wins just to make it interesting. And obviously, they'll be a big player in the Big 12 as well. You want to hear Danny's takes on the 3.30 games, the night games, the Sunday night shootout? Uh, you got to listen to the Bud Light pregame tailgate coming up on Saturday. Or you can just watch it on YouTube. That's right. It'll be there as well. Danny, thanks for hanging out today, buddy. Good to see you. Of course, guys. Glad to be on.